it's a quake. According to Google, black texts are commonly used in South Africa, but also in other African countries. This is where we see black professionals um, are required to basically support extended families. Now, this situation is certainly not different right here in Namibia. Now, the young people um, are certainly feeling it, and they are calling it the African trap. Some of them have even gone into debt because of this black tax. Now, ladies and gentlemen, all the youngsters that are watching, hello and welcome. It's a quick, and uh, this is the platform where you, the youth, takes charge of your growth and development, where we engage with experts and uh, all the industry leaders. Uh, and this is a platform brought to you by the Namibia Media Trust. I'm your host, Wea. And of course, I do have my two guests right here, um, Dr. Wanja Juguna. Um, welcome. I trust that this is going to be a very fruitful discussion. <laughs> Hopefully. Thank you. Oh, it will be welcome. Thank you for your time. And of course, uh, Lonata, welcome. welcome. Um, um, we're going to hear from the youth side. What do they feel? What are their feelings and mm, all of this? Exactly. Now, black techs, is it a necessary uh, responsibility? That is exactly what we are discussing uh, for this section. All right. Tell me, in your opinion, what is your definition of black tech? Uh, for me, in my own definition, uh, black tax itself uh, actually refers to the social and uh, financial contribution that young black professionals are actually bound mm. to actually to make to their families, uh, yeah. extended family. That is upon after graduating mm -hmm. in the form of actually paying back of support mm -hmm. that was offered mm -hmm. in their post education yeah. after they've graduated and secured employment. Mm. So they actually bound to pay back in such a form that they take care mm. of their ex families mm -hmm. and extended families. Mm -hmm. But it also trickles down to say now that we have a, a graduate responsibility mm -hmm. to ensure that even people that were not in their cycle, but yeah. their family members, mm. they are now coming to say, no, every month we must be included in your budget. <laughs> but this whole narrative, I think it's a, a black mentality. Yeah which have actually escalated to another level whereby young people are not offered a chance also to grow, mm -hmm. to ensure that their future, how do they actually ensure that their future that they're studying for, mm -hmm. they also build a foundation. Mm -hmm. So they are now actually have a sort of the head string attached to say if I've been paying for your taxi to go to, to UNAM, mm -hmm. if I've actually contributed financial support, then it, you are like a race sort of as a creditor. You, you need to pay back. Yeah. That is how I understand what is actually referred to as black tax. Yeah. So basically, you're saying that the families are holding back the graduates to sort of elevate them to the next level. Exactly. Sort of to be the, the, a loan. When you go for a, to a cash loan, yeah. actually borrow money. <laughs> yeah. But then you're also bound to pay back the money with the interest. Uh -huh. So in terms of a, a young black person that graduates, mm. Your salary already, in fact, take the narrative to say in Namibia, for example, when you go, most of the, popul uh, most of the students are actually funded by NSF. Yeah. Of course, they already have, it's a loan, True. which they need to pay back. Pay back yeah. Then you have another burden that comes from your family to say, no, <laughs> we need a, a stake from your salary. But NSF, on the other hand, through revenue, yeah. is also looking towards your little money. So you can see the two external forces is attacking. Yeah. Attacking the, the this that individual. small cake that you have. True. Mm -hmm. So that is how I understand this whole narrative behind the black text. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, nicely put, Dr. Wanja. Tell me, from your perspective as a parent, right? The parent from birth, obviously, they have put the child through school, then through university, and we don't know who else within the family has contributed towards the education of this. Now, is it the responsibility of the young professional to? Payback. You hear terms and phrases that say, like, no, I help you with what, what, I help your parents with this and this and this, so it's time for you to pay back. Is it their responsibility? Um, I want to start by saying I don't like the word black tax, black, the word black. Okay. Um, I wish it had another name, mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately the word is black. Yeah. From my own experience, yeah. um, it won't work because... I come from a very small family. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I had a discussion with one of my students mm -hmm. who comes from a family of 13. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me for them there's really no choice. Okay. So I asked him, uh, wh when we think black tax, you say, hey, we don't even have a choice because 
uh, we are expected to help educate everybody else behind us. Mm. So I asked him, and what do you think is a solution? And he said, people need to stop having many children. He made it, it was uh, from a young person's perspective. Okay. And he said, the problem with black tax is the children that our parents have. Uh, if you have just one child, mm. they, you're not going to have some of these challenges. True. But if you have two, three, four, mm -hmm. your parents expect you to also play a role. True. Let me talk from my own perspective. You'll see where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. um, I come from a very small family. My father uh, apparently, what he told us, mm. we are only me and a brother. Okay. And he told us, I asked him why, why you know, why are we so, few, you know, why? He said, actually, I wanted one child. That's what he told me. Mm -hmm. But your mother uh, tricked me and got the second <laughs> one. Um, okay. So, and I asked him, why one child? And he says, I grew up, uh, uh, they were very poor yeah. when, when he grew up. Yeah. And he told himself, to, he's only going to have one child because you'll be able to raise that one child. Uh -huh. Of course, now he had the second. Okay. From my experience, I will tell you the truth. I've never had my parents, they are both late now. Yeah. I never had my parents ask me to do anything for them at all. The only one time I remember being asked to uh, contribute mm -hmm. was my brother. For some reason, I think, I don't know what had happened. He was in high school yeah. and he, has, uh, he was sent home mm -hmm. to, because of school fees or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father was out of the country, he was, he was studying in the US, I remember. Mm -hmm. And my mother didn't have money that time, and I was working already. Mm -hmm. And he told me, okay, your brother has been sent home, we don't understand because I think I paid everything, mm -hmm. but he's coming home before we sort this out. Can you please pay this money? Money, yeah. I said, uh, are you going to refund the money? I asked, he <laughs> says, yeah, I'll refund. <laughs> okay. Because I was raised not to feel that I must pay back but, anything. True. Uh, I was raised to feel I would help. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. the other thing, uh, so of course, they paid back that money, okay. by the way. Mm -hmm. With interest? But, uh, not interest, <laughs> but it was paid back somehow. Okay. But then the other thing was, that was important, the way we were raised, my brother and I, yeah. we knew every time, uh, even when we were younger, I mean, we saw this from our parents. When we mm. visited places, mm. we'd always carry stuff. True. Now, we grew up knowing if I visit you, where, if I come to your house, it's very rare I'll come empty-handed. Mm. I'll come with a packet of milk, uh, you know, something like that. Mm. So we grew up with that, and that's something we do. But in terms of we must pay back, in, from my perspective, from yeah. it hasn't happened. Mm. But I am aware of people who've had one problem after the other in mm -hmm. terms of black tax. Okay. Why? Um, and I think, I think it's, it's something that children should not, it should, it should not be pushed down their throat. Literally, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we, and this is naughty, it's naughty to say this, but we don't ask to be born. It is your choice as a parent <laughs> who decides I'm going to have this child, I'm going to have the second yeah. and the third. Yeah. And there's this expectation that the more children I have, the more they'll take care of us. Mm. And, and it becomes a burden for the, for the young people when they are studying mm. or even as they complete their studies. There's this expectation, we educated you. Yes. Now wow. you have to pay back. True. I just feel it's, it's, it should be, there should be a negotiation mm -hmm. whereby the, the, the children shouldn't feel it's an obligation. Okay. It should feel like it's something I want to do because it is, it's a duty. Mm -hmm. The Ubuntu kind of thing, it's a duty. Sure. You know, my parents taking care of them. Yeah. But it should not be something cut in stone that because you did this, you must do this. That's what I feel. True. Yeah. I love it when you said that the children that are within this family were not asked to be born. It is then the responsibility of the parents to sort of um, provide a, um, or have a financial plan that contributes to the support of these children, be it education, be it expenses, or whatever comes from having all of these children. And I believe that, especially when it comes to the African culture, is they, uh, I think they take it literal when they say, be fruitful and multiply. And they've done that, and that burden has certainly fallen on certain young professionals when they are required to um, you know, uh, support these extended families. Now, tell me, in your own experience, have you personally experienced black tax? And how did you handle it? Of course, you know, it's a, it's a graduate also who went through the same uh, whole process of being assisted by family members. And, you know, mm -hmm. Of 
because you are already bound. It's not an experience. Yeah. But in the African culture, <laughs> there's no discussion. You cannot even debate about this. If you are coming from the African continent, yeah. there's no debate about what, what you already know that this, this thing is sort of to be a norm, <laughs> a moral that they expect you to say. Mm-hmm. Once you graduate, once you are, they expect you mm-hmm. to take care of them. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing like if you experience it yeah. in the it's African just, continent, it's mm-hmm. something that is there. Mm-hmm. Like it's an ex- expectation that is already there for you to say that. If you, if you have gone to school, once you finish, you graduate, and then you secure employment, mm-hmm. you have to, but you like, are bound to. When you, when you sit and look at what you earn as a young professional, uh, with what you're required to sort of take care of within the family, um, do you at a point say, no, I can't? Yeah, of course. There, yeah. Are, there are things like, for example, you have cousins that give birth, but then you are not expected to be an uncle. Yeah. Then if you don't support, <laughs> you are labeled as such and such. True. But true. That's n- n- but basically it's not actually your responsibility. Yeah. Uh-huh. You also have to build your future. You need to. But for example, let me give you an example. If I graduate, but I will just be supporting, supporting. Yeah. But I will not be young forever. You know, once I turn 35 and above, yeah. I need to have a foundation. Yeah. So this whole thing of I think we need to have a limit. Mm-hmm. We also need to say no. Mm-hmm. This is a line I draw. If my budget for this month is for my it's my own budget. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, hopefully you have the budgets, and you have you have also um, sort of advised your peers um, within you know your spaces and had the discussions as well. Now, doctor, um, uh, how can young professionals sort of do I call it? Will will we ever reach financial freedom when it comes to? Obviously, we are born into these cultures. This is what we um, you know grow up and see. This is what is drilled in our minds. Will uh, um, young professionals, or is there sort of tips and advice that you can give them to reach that financial freedom, or sort of just have the discussions within their families to really be honest about their financial situations and not be you know like you said, this black text is literally forced down their throats. Um, I was listening to um, a young person who was talking about what he thinks, he feels about black tax. Mm-hmm. And he, was, he gave a very good example of, of um, a plane. When, you're, when you get into the plane, you know there's that usual rhetoric they give you or about if the plane has a problem, the masks come down, come down. And, you, and, and you have to wear, the, if you have a child, you have to wear the mask first yep. before you put it on the child. He gave a very good example and he said that's exactly what young people should be doing now. Uh-huh. If you're going to do black tax, you've got to make yourself financially stable uh, because he was giving an example where people, where there are some people who say, I've been educated, or oh, the first thing I'm going to do is build my mother a house. Mm. You're going to take a bond, for example. You're going to build, uh, you're, you're going to buy a house or something like that. Mm-hmm. You're in debt for a very long time, and it's not your house. True. It is for your mother. Yeah. And he was saying, the, one of the most important things people should do, start with yourself. If you are financially stable, mm-hmm. then you're able to help and help others mm. not must help ah, help yeah. it is it is something that you have to think consciously mm-hmm. if i am going to advance in society mm-hmm. i've got to start with myself i've got to advance myself then move on to help other people mm. and it should not be a must mm. that's what he was saying what i'm saying is if if young people can start have that mindset where it's important to know that you need to help your parents but you need to start with yourself uh, be financially stable. If it is like uh, another person is listening to saying, it's important, to, you can have a side hustle, for example. Yeah. You know, you have this particular job, then you have a side hustle, which helps now to help the rest of the people in the family, especially mm-hmm. your siblings. Yeah. Um, but it should not be put down your throat that we did this, you must do this. Mm-hmm. I go back to that point I said. You got those kids knowing when you start having children you need to know how am i going to educate these children mm-hmm. long term am i can i afford one child can i afford two children can i afford three children i'll give you my point of view i was married uh, a, a while back yeah. and before we even got married that i was married in 1998 before we got married my husband my ex-husband and i mm-hmm. we agreed we were going to have one child 
and why he already had a, 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 he was already divorced he had another child somewhere and you said because of the uh, issues of supporting yeah. we can manage to support one child raise this child the way we are able to mm -hmm. um, and we are not even thinking the black tax thing that time of sure, course sure. and that's what we did we I just have one child mm -hmm. I am able to educate do stuff for this child because it's one one do I expect something from my son when uh, he's done studying? Now he's studying. Yeah. Um, I expect him to help with, with uh, a few finances, like if he's still staying under the same roof with me. Groceries um, and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If mm -hmm. I have a mortgage, so I expect him to help because at the end of the day, that, that property belongs to it him. Belongs so to him. Yeah. you can help. True. But, in, but you see now, I don't have another child he's going to educate uh -huh. you understand so i don't expect him to give me money to educate somebody <laughs> True. if i am retired i want to imagine i'll have a pension yeah so i i'm not in a position to push that down my son now because of that particular issue so that's the other thing i'm saying parents let's start thinking or future those ones who've already done it it's too late <laughs> but for those who are future. going to do it start thinking yeah I want, how many children do I want to have? Yeah. Can I raise these children without asking for assistance? Uh -huh. With that, and don't use, the other problem we have is because we are thinking about the society. Yeah. And I'll give you an example. My, my ex-husband and I had said we'd have children mm -hmm. after two years. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd at least have two years. Why? Because we wanted to be stable, a little stable. True. Before those are things you have to think about. Mm -hmm. that, that stability that you're building. Within those two years, mm -hmm. There was his mother, there was my mother. When am I going to see a grandchild? You know, stuff like <laughs> true, that. True, so the that's family. the other thing. There's this, um, there's this pressure from the family that uh, you have taken too long uh, to have a child. Then you have that child. Then uh, you have taken too long to have the second one. I always say, and I still repeat it, mm -hmm. what happens at the beginning, you have a child, people come, they take care of you. You know, there's the shower and everything. Mm -hmm. After that, you're on your own. You raise that child alone. Mm -hmm. So listen to people and you go get the second child. Remember, they'll come those first few months. After that, you're raising that child alone. alone so it's alone. up to you if okay. you want to listen to pressure for the third and the fourth mm. kid. <laughs> so it's, we have to start having a different mindset. True. Why do I have, want to have the children? How many can I afford? Mm -hmm. Can I raise these children without burdening other people? with raising the children. That's where I go back to. So mm. true, so much wisdom there. Mm. Uh, it's so, so very true. Um, do you agree with what doctor say? Uh, very much. I think it's a, it's a component of family planning that also plays a role because uh, nowadays young people, they just have multiple children and yeah. they expect uncles now to be imposed on black tax. And yeah. then once you don't support, yeah. you become a bad uncle, but it was not your responsibility initially. Yeah. yeah so I really agree with everything and yeah. I think the issue of side hustle mm -hmm. to say that even if you have a job as young as you are you should also have a side hustle and also don't listen to what people are saying mm -hmm. listen to, to your the pocket power you mm -hmm. know what is your salary can you really afford this uh, things that you are getting yourself into if you want to have five children you must also be careful <laughs> to say who who is going to take care of them also yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so but also what what i wanted to notice to say that yeah Sometimes the issue of black tax comes in when the fatherhood also fails. Mm -hmm. Because when I have a cousin who gives birth, mm -hmm. she gives birth, mm -hmm. and then the father of the you know, pregnant, he's not, he's not actually playing a role. Playing his role as the, the then father. Then that black yeah. tax comes to the family, yeah. to the uncles and the whole people that are the extended family. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole dynamic, it's a big thing that actually needs uh, actually coaching Definitely. It's yeah. a huge responsibility Very that much. has um, so much um, effect on so many people, if not properly. Like you said, Doctor, uh, you took two years you know, to so, sort of plan, get to the point and actually have the child and know that this is the only child we're going to have and this is how we're going to take care of it. So planning, planning, planning is very important. So what's your advice to your you know, the youth that's watching, what, what is, you know, um, in, in, in your case, like you said, you're a graduate and obviously you're expected to, you know, um, support and give support um, to where you can. What's your advice to them? No, my advice is to say that you don't really need to run away mm -hmm. with your whole salary and stuff like that. Of course, you need to help where it's possible. Where it's possible, It's yes. your family at the yeah. end of the day mm -hmm. and you also need them. Mm -hmm. But don't just be impulsive because people always talk, even if you graduate today, they expect you to say you go rent, yes. Say, when to go rent, he or she did not build her mother's house. 
even if you stay there, they will again stay. You see, he's getting old in his mother's house. Yeah. So people always talk. Yeah. So just have a responsibility to say yes. I do what is right for my future. Yep. Because at the end of the day, those people, when you are going to be of your future, they won't be there. So have a, have a red line to say, this is my red line. I also just build your future, mm -hmm. but also just assist. But it's not a must. Mm -hmm. So it, not, it might not be something that is imposed on you to say it's a must that you need to take care of all the problems. <laughs> but just for us to say as young as you are, build your future also. Yeah. But help where you can. Help where you can. Yeah. Uh, now, doctor, um, to sort of... It's so important that you mentioned, uh, and the one thing that you said is mindset. Um, mindset, um, I think if we change mindsets, we can change a lot of things that has happened within our society. How do we then change the mindset of the generation that we are raising? Like, what's done is done, but from where we are and to where we want to go to and see everybody grow, everybody flourish, everybody having businesses, um, houses, and families well taken care of. How do we, as the communities that we are in and how do we help each other we are after all africans and i am because you are um how do we change mindsets there's something he said that's uh very important he said if you are if you are a man and you have uh brought forth a child mm -hmm. and um you have a child here you have a child there you need to learn to know that you must take care of those children okay. whether you're staying with them the mothers or not mm -hmm. If you're, if you're, I don't know what you, do you call them baby daddy? I don't remember the name. What's that word you call them? <laughs> baby daddy. Baby Whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you know you have a child somewhere, take care of that child. Yeah. Because that's the other problem now we have. Yeah. So that there's a lot, there's a lot of pressure yeah. uh, on the mothers to mm. raise the children alone. Sometimes you have two, sometimes you have three. Yeah. But it goes back again into planning. Mm. Uh, very, very, I think the most important thing that we need to do is remember in, there's that as, aspect of, of uh, in Africa I, that I love, mm. the family mm -hmm. uh, part. We, we are, we, you are because I am. That True. one is there, it will always be there. True. It's a very important part of our family, um, of, our, of our culture. It's, it's actually culture. Yeah. It's very important to know you can take care of this person. True. I can take care of this person. Um, it's very rare. like something I've observed here in, in Namibia, which is very, 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 I think it's a very good thing. Mm -hmm. Orphans, most of mm. the time, orphans in this country are taken care of by, by relatives. And sure. I've seen that. Sure. If, if they don't have parents, you know, an uncle takes over. Mm. Um, I have a student I still remember, um, and, and I thought this is lovely. And I was asking her, um, how many are you in the home? Yeah. And she said, they, what they have done is parents from, you know, different parents from up country. Mm. They have this uncle here. They are 10 in the, in the, in the home. But this only uh he told me i think only three of the kids are actually no four of the kids belong to this particular uncle, uncle yeah. the other kids are from uh up country mm -hmm. because you want your children to to study well yeah. you take them to 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 vinduk to this uncle so and so and that's yeah. the way they've grown up mm -hmm. i think that is something very unique of course they help mm -hmm. uh so they've all grown up here because there are good schools here they then go to university mm -hmm. and that's that's a very they're th very unique things i've seen happen here mm -hmm. but you're not pushing them down somebody True. in your mind you know uh let me help I, and that's why it comes to discussion mm -hmm. it's very important to your parents to understand the thing the way they grew up food was cheaper those days food way is cheaper. expensive now <laughs> maybe something that was one dollar now it's, it's 10 like 20, it's 20. Yeah, yeah. so there's a, there needs to be a negotiation between parents and, yeah. and children that uh, look here this is so this is as much as i can do yeah. uh, i have this little job mm -hmm. i can help you with uh, this this amount mm -hmm. so that you know you you know you also you they're also able to to the parents can be comfortable there's nothing as bad as your parents suffering back home True. and you can afford and to out here yeah so you know. have a negotiation <laughs> with parents yeah. tell them look here i'm working here it's difficult it's expensive mm. this is all i can afford mm -hmm. uh, but i can give you this monthly mm -hmm. sometimes i may not give it all to you but True. the negotiation is very important okay. parents need to understand things have changed yeah the way they the things were cheaper before they're no longer cheaper mm -hmm. negotiate with your children mm -hmm. so that you maintain the relationship mm -hmm. you don't disconnect because these days the young people they you, they can't take off they can decide they have nothing to do with this person mm -hmm. so it's very very important that uh, there's a negotiation and uh, you understand where they're coming from and you know and how you can help each other that's what I think let's let there be a relationship of some sort mm -hmm. conversation yeah. is very a conversation yes mm -hmm. conversation is absolutely
absolutely um, important and this conversation has been very important very fruitful any last words from your end yeah i think uh, ubuntu must continue yeah uh, you are because because we need each other yeah, yeah you're yeah. just saying that let's continue <laughs> helping each other but yeah let's also be careful mm -hmm. yeah that's my last one. let's just work together mm -hmm. but help your mother help your father mm -hmm. but it must not be to say you know the extended family must every month calling you to say <laughs> We need 500. We need 500 dollars. Yeah. Send it now. Yeah, but if it's your mother and your father, make sure you help even every month because those are your... Yeah, you know, the people that birthed you. Yeah, there's True. no way we can abandon them. Sure. Yeah. Doctor, last words? I think it, again, I'll go back to the negotiation. First of all, as a, as a young person, think about yourself and your future. What do you want in, uh, for your future? Where do you, where do you see yourself 10 years, 20 years? You've got to take care of that now. But to take care of that also, of course, as he says, you can't disconnect from your family. Mm -hmm. These are the same people you'll need if you're sick today. Sure. You know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Talk, it's yourself first, mm -hmm. take care of yourself, take care of your future but also in, in, incorporate your family True. and then discuss. It's very important that you discuss, talk with your, with your parents, talk with your uh, rel uh, relatives mm -hmm. and let them know, I want to build my future this way. Yeah. Please support me. Don't overburden me. So I think that's, that's what I would, that's so the way I would look at it. So true. Mm. Thank you so much both for your time. It's been great having you here on this platform. So there you have it, all right? You heard it, I am because you are. And it's a case of having open and honest conversation that's with your family um, so that we can all grow at the end of the day. At the end of the day, it is, I have taken care of you, you have taken care of me, we are better together. All right. So thank you so much for having joined us for this episode of Black Tax. Take a look at it. If it's relevant within your situation, make sure that uh, you have those honest um, uh, conversations. We thank our panel. We thank the rest of the crew for being here. It's been a quick um, a platform where we as the youth take charge of our development and have those truthful and honest conversations. From my side, Wea, have a good one. It's, it's a, a quick. quick. It's a quake.